Hi, I'm Jake Hicks and welcome to our Team Bowens Lighting Tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at the differences between both hard and soft light and the benefits of each of them. We'll also be looking at the advantages of actually combining them into a single light source. Today we're going to be using four 400 Gemini heads to actually light our model. We're also going to be using a fifth additional head just to light the background. This is really going to help to separate her from that background and make her really stand out in the actual shot. So the first light I'm going to position in this setup is going to be my hard light. On this 400 head I've actually got a maxi light reflector and I've also got a grid attached to the front of that. What that does is really focus the light into a pool of light onto the model's face and I've positioned it probably a couple of feet above her head, angled down at about 45 degrees just to make sure that we're getting some nice clean shadows underneath the jawline, underneath the nose and underneath the eyebrows. It's also worth mentioning that you shouldn't have it too high so that you don't lose the catch lights in the eyes. The second light I'm going to get in place for this setup is actually going to be the Lumiere 100 by 80 softbox. I'm going to position that directly behind the original hard light, so this is effectively our second key light. With this bigger light source, it's going to create a very flattering light that's going to enable that light just to wrap around the model. The third light we've got in this setup here is a fill light. This is actually a 60 by 80 Lumiere softbox and it's positioned at the model's feet. I haven't angled it too far up, I've angled it just into the middle of her body just so that it's not overpowering the actual face and it's just filling in just enough of those shadows just to bring in a little bit more detail. So the fourth and final light that we're going to be using in this particular setup on the model is actually going to be a hair light. That's positioned several feet behind her and it's actually angled down towards the top of her head. What that means is the fact that that light is lighting the hair so it'll really separate her from the background. On the light itself, I actually have a maxi light reflector dish as well as a grid. And again, that grid will really help control the light and stop it from spilling onto the rest of the set. So we have actually added a fifth and final light to this setup, and that is purely lighting the background. At the moment, we've got four lights that are just lighting the model, so there's no light actually falling onto the background, so it's very dark back there. The light itself has actually got another Lumiere 80 by 100 softbox on it, and what that's going to do is just be completely separated from her and just lighting the background itself. Now that we've gone over the setup, let's take a closer look at each of the lights individually. So the first initial key light we're using in this setup is our 400 Gemini head with a maxi light reflector dish on it. On that we've got a grid attachment which really focuses the pool of light directly onto the model's face and drops off very quickly into shadow towards the bottom of the body. Some of the benefits of using a hard light like this is that we're going to have a lot of contrast in our image. The shadows are going to be very dark and the highlights are going to be very bright. Areas like the skin, the hair and the jewellery are going to have a lot of spectral highlights and it's going to give the image an overall crisp look. Let's take a few shots of that and see what it looks like. In this shot we can see the contrast where the shadows are very, very dark. There's no detail at all in the shadows. Uh, we're looking at quite a small pool of light and that's thanks to the grid which has just kept all that light focused directly onto the mo model's head and torso. We can also see that a lot of spectral highlights on the jewellery, like I mentioned, which is really going to give the image an extra punch. Our second key light is actually a large softbox. This one is the Lumiere 80x100. Uh, a larger light source like this is going to add a lot more light to our image overall. So the pool of light from the hard light is now opened up a lot down here at the bottom end of the body by that softer uh, light coming in. Some of the benefits of using a large light source like this is that by the time the light reaches the model, it's a lot softer overall. So it's going to fill in a lot of those shadows that was present in the hard light. It's going to give us a lot more detail to work with in post-production, but also you can see that the transition from light to dark is a lot more gradual. Let's take a look and see how that shot compares with the hard light. Now we've introduced just the softbox on its own, we can see that a lot of those shadows have been opened up and there's a lot more light in the image overall. You can also see the transition on the cheekbone from light to dark is a lot softer, so it gradually tapers off into the shadows. You can also see that the lighting is a lot more flattering on the model's face as it opens up again a lot of those shadows. Once we've turned on our hard light and our soft light, we've combined it into one key light. 
what that gives us is it gives us our pool of light from our hard light, but also softens it up from our softbox behind. What that means is that it's given us the contrast from the hard light, but also lifting a little bit of the shadows and giving us an overall far more flashing light. It's worth mentioning as well that the softbox behind is actually twice the power of our hard light in front. That's because of the size, it's actually dissipating that power over a greater distance, so that by the time it reaches the model, it's actually a little bit less. All it's doing is just feathering that lovely soft light. Let's take a shot and see how that looks. In this shot, we can see when we combine both of the two key lights that we still have the spectral highlights on the jewellery. We've got the really bright, crisp jewellery standing out there, as well as the colours in the outfit. That's due to the hard light. And we've also got far softer light around the face and on the model skin, which is a lot more flattering overall. This is our third light in the setup. This is going to be my fill light. We've got a 60 by 80 Lumiere softbox here, and we're going to be adding a lot of light just underneath the jawline, underneath the nose, and underneath the eyebrows. What that's going to mean is that we're going to get a lot more detail in the shadows than you would have if we're using a reflector disc where you're trying to bounce some light from our key light up under there. That addition of the extra head means that that extra detail in the shadows means that when I add more contrast in post-production, that means that that detail is there, so I'm able to push the images a little bit further. Let's take a look and see how that looks with and without the fill light. Now that we've added the fill light, we can see that we've added a lot more light towards the bottom part of this image. So we're adding some fill underneath the arm there and also underneath the jawline. This gives me a lot more detail to work with later on, which means that when I push some of the saturation and contrast, that detail will still be there. With the fourth and final light we're going to be adding to light our model, we're going to be using a hair light. And again, that uses the maxi light reflector with a grid. That's actually positioned directly opposite our original hard light with a model in between. And the reason why I'm using that is to pick her out from the background. If our model had darker hair, then she would be lost against that background on this hand side. And that hair light just adds that edge. Let's take a look at the shot with that hair light added and see how much she stands out. <laughs> Now that we've added the hair light to camera left, we can really see the right hand side of the model stand out from the background. If the model had darker hair or she was wearing a darker outfit, she would completely disappear on that left hand side of the image. So by using that hair light, it's really helped to stand her off the background. We've added our fifth and final light, and this light is for our background. Up until this point, the background's been very dark, so I just wanted to add a little bit of light back there, again, to further help our model stand out. As you can see, I've angled this 80 by 100 Lumiere softbox towards us a little. That's because if I angled it towards the background, it would be very bright on the right-hand side. By feathering the light across the background, it gives a very even spread, which allows the light to look even directly behind our model. Let's take a look and see how that looks with the background light added. By introducing our fifth and final light on the background, it's really helped to lighten up that area behind her, which makes her stand forward in the image. Before, we had a lot of darkness towards the bottom end, but with that introduction of that final light, it's really made her jump forward. So that was our combining hard and soft light lighting tutorial. Many thanks indeed for watching. And if you're going to try this at home, think about playing with the different ratios between the hard and soft light. Sometimes the hard light is going to work better and brighter, sometimes vice versa. It just depends on the situation. Thanks again, and don't forget to check back here at Team Bowens for more inspirational lighting tutorials. See you next time. <laughs>